Hello guys and welcome to episode 17 of my Endless Legend playthrough playing as the Forgotten. And today this is going to be the first video that I've made on Endless Legend for a while. And I'm sorry about that guys, but I was kind of ill for a while. I was feeling a bit down. I didn't really get around to making any videos. So anyway, here we are back with the series. And uh, I really need to work out what I was doing. And I think it was a lot to do with quests. So if we go to the quest tab, we can see how we're doing. Um, we are working on this Sisters of Mercy quest still. I think that was bugged the last time I checked. Uh, the This quest, the Legend of the Three. With only two units and a hero equipped with the Shard of Icarel. Search the initial unspoiled ruins and prepare to fight for your treasure. So where is that? Just down here. Okay. So we can maybe do that at some point. That is to defeat the Guardian. Which has been roaming through our lands if I remember correctly. We've got to keep armies from other empires or minor factions away from the region of Talillion for five turns in order to gain the Scythe of Origa. And we gain a contract army composed of one Scythe unit. But I don't think we're going to complete that quest because if I remember, Talillion is down here. And yeah, it looks like <laughs> another faction has taken over that region. And that's going to make it very hard for us to do anything there. Although this region is very nice. Look at that. Two gold deposits. There's also a gold deposit in the region next to it. That would be awesome for us. And it might be worth going to war with the Volters in order to get that. Let's go back to the quests. And this is our other quest here. A cooperative quest in order to help gather 100 Palladian. Who are the Jotus? Travel to the indicated village and talk to the Jotus while showing the Eye of the Herners equipped on your hero. So that is down here in the Wild uh, Walker's territory. Not like we're going to be doing that anytime soon, I don't think. And this one. Search two ruins in Lapoli in order to find the right location, but beware of the Tetic armies roaming there. Oh yeah, okay. So <laughs> this was the one where they're spamming me with Tetic armies, which is really frustrating. So I've got this army here of Assassins and Arpujas uh, in order to go fight those. I've also got this army here with third builder Guliyawa. So let's go ahead and get this fight underway. Yeah, the other two armies are locked out. And because of this is a bit bad, I'm going to fight this manually. Don't want to lose any units unnecessarily. Although these Tetic armies with the crossbows are actually really frustrating to fight against. Anyway, just get all my units into position. We shall ready up. We do have the initiative, so we should be able to do some serious damage here. Let's uh, make sure we focus on the same unit. We do have improved movement, so hopefully I can get to that tile and attack in this turn. I'll make sure we go to that tile. Yeah, that tile and then, then attack. That one can go to that one and attack. That one can go to that one and attack that one. And then this one can move to there and attack them. And the Apuja can move to that tile and attack that one there. You also have the Militia. So let's launch that and see what happens. They have the two gold swords now, which looks pretty awesome. But already there, a ton of damage done. Unfortunately, that unit not going to be able to get into range. But we are probably going to finish off that unit this turn. Yeah, easy peasy. So this will be a lot easier than I thought it would be. I didn't realise how much damage my assassins could do. Let's 
So just waiting for the units to move, and then we'll be able to finish this off easily. Let's just make sure that that has an attack order now, and that unit will die in no time at all. And I'm sure the next unit will follow. I think this Apu just should have enough damage to finish it off. As long as it hits. Well, never mind. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Let's just launch and finish this off. Solid amount of damage there, and that's one army down. We're going to get a lot of experience for killing all of these armies, that's for sure. So yeah, the uh, Militia and the Arpuja are levelling up there. I'm not going to move into that territory just yet. Because I don't want that army to get attacked in the next turn by these four armies. While this army can't reinforce. Not sure entirely what I was doing with that army. But I think everything is done for this turn. Let's just have a look at our technology. So we're a little bit away from Era 5 technology. Currently I have Signal Core as my next one. We do currently gain 2135 dust from production. Which is pretty good. Just trying to think uh, what else we could do to make that better. If I just quickly have a look around in my villages. Yeah, we can add the dust refinery here to the queue. That will help out. I think a lot of these places can add the dust refineries and that dust water deposit, deposit sorry, is very important so we will make sure we build that as soon as possible and I think I didn't build all of the dust refineries before because I had a limited amount of glass steel and you can see we've already ran out of it again so any more places that can build one will have to wait But at the moment, I think Galarath is making the most dust for our empire. Because they have so many bonuses there. At Adakin, 300 dust is not too bad. But anyway, let's not dwell on that too much. Let's move on to the next turn. And hopefully we can start to deal with these armies. So the Roving Clans, close to Quest Victory. We haven't really been involved with the uh, Roving Clans much, but I'm pretty sure it will involve them coming into my lands at some point. Again, the enemy armies are trying to pillage my lands. So what we're going to do is get my armies into the region. And we shall make that attack occur. So I'm going to fight this manually, just to make sure I don't lose units unnecessarily. I love how cool these Sisters of Mercy units look, especially with the gold weapons or the dust weapons. So it looks like we're good to go straight away. I'm not going to worry about redeploying my forces too much. My 
hero here can maybe one-shot these units. Yeah, that was complete overkill. So they are going to attack my hero, and it looks like they're going to miss. That unit didn't miss, though, and that did quite a lot of damage. So a little bit of healing there for my units. Nothing too special though. Now I believe my hero does have last stand. But it doesn't look like she'll need it. And she just killed another unit entirely. How that assassin missed, I do not know. Well, that is job done with the help of the Sisters of Mercy. And we've leveled up another unit. So let's uh, head towards these remaining armies. And we got to search these ruins. I don't know if it makes the armies disappear if we do. Uh, so I might actually go ahead and try and just search them straight away in order to avoid fighting all of the rest of those units. So that doesn't matter anymore. The population of Carrot has grown. Very nice. Okay, we probably need to think about expanding this village at some point, or this city. So we do have another another borough street underway. This dust water extractor, though, could be built sooner than later. Because those watchtowers aren't very necessary at the moment. If I bring this queue up, that'll make it easier. There we go. And we may as well get the mithrite extractor. Not so important, but would be useful later on. Now the idea is that we will change the population to production once we start working on this dust water extractor and dust uh, refinery. But for now, it doesn't particularly look like it matters. We have this army of predators. Let's go take out these eyeless ones. That should be nice and easy. We'll just auto resolve that. We do not want them in our lands. I'm going to go take out this roaming army up here as well. And we have this one last army just here. I'd like to get him onto land. So that we can search those temple ruins. So the roving clans are down here. I don't know how they're so close to quest victory. But it's something that we might have to worry about. And I probably will have to close my borders with them if I haven't already. So if we go to... Diplomacy. We will close our borders. And that will stop them finishing any quests that they need to do. Because I believe every quest, or at least the end parts, always require you to go in other people's territory. So as long as you have closed borders, they can't complete the quest. As far as I know. Obviously, unless they declare war on you, but. It's unlikely that, that that's going to happen at this point because, to be fair, my nation is rather large and I am quite strong militarily. Even though the Forgotten aren't really known for that, um, my units are pretty well upgraded at the moment.
Uh, the other thing we need to do is uh, make sure we check our infiltration, of course, because we have a lot of spies at the moment, and they are all on level 4 infiltration at the moment. Uh, we could steal technology. Let me just go towards my faction quest. And we need to obtain a total of 30 technologies from error 1 to error 3. So yeah, if we go to our spies, we steal technology. We shall steal some error 3 technologies. We will get the uh, reaping stations. Awesome. And my spy was partially wounded. That's not too good. And we will do the same with this lady. Trying to think which one would be best for us. Maybe the uncommon alloys would be a good one. That meritocratic promotion, if we still haven't got that, I may as well select that, actually. So we're going to get that, and that will be unnoticed. And that has completed our quest. So that gave us 30 grass silk, which isn't much. Our empire grows stronger every day. Cast in an image that would make my forebearers proud. And Zaima's tormentors will soon meet their own forebears. Okay. Right, let's move on to part six of our quest. So the summary. Progress. Informants indicate that one of Zaima's three tormentors, the Volta, commands an army somewhere in the larger area. You must lead an army there and see that she is delivered to justice. A breakthrough. The whereabouts of the forgotten who disappeared in the night Zaima was taken remain in the shadow. But the whereabouts of one of Zaima's tormentors has come into light. As our power grows, as our influence reaches further, we hear more and more idle talk from underground drinking pits, gossip in the bustling street markets, and loose tongues in our enemies' corridors of power. Several sources Informers across Oregon have reported that the Volta woman we seek leads a ragtag army in the wastes of some nearby region. The latest reports suggest she hides in one of the ruins of the area. They tell me her name is Aggie. Aggie, Zaima whispers when I relay her the name. Yes, that was her name. Aggie. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but there we go. I notice the gentle way in which she says the name, like she is sheltering a beautiful, fragile flower in her cupped hands. Do you still seek vengeance? I ask. Zaima's voice hardens. The Volta, she tells me, showed not a jot of emotion, save for a cold glee as she performed her tortures. Her hands were scorched and twisted claws, her actions as cold and methodical as a butcher carving up a haunch of meat, and her eyes sunken chips of blue ice. Agi died a long time ago. Only a monster remains. So among fallen ruins indicated within an area of two neighbour regions, search to discover Argy's hiding place. And we get 25 red, red sang. Not a very good reward again, but there we go. Um, so let's uh, continue stealing technology as we do have one more agent with level 4 infiltration level. Actually, we might not need to. Let's actually wait until infiltration level 5. Nine turns until that's the case. And then we can maybe uh, steal something a little bit better. Uh, so hero, hero leveled up, and we are going to get the extra seniority there, wonderful, and I'm really getting back into the swing of things, I, I'm starting to enjoy this again, obviously I, I enjoyed it before, um, but yeah, it's great, I am very much enjoying the Forgotten's sort of playthrough and the uh, the quest, I, I really think it's awesome. Anyway, um, 
let's go to this quest and find out exactly where we need to go. So the faction quests. We need to go into the Wild Walker's Lands. Okay. Not sure if we can get in there. Because I don't want to have open borders, so this could be an issue. Like, I wish we could have open borders from them without giving it ourselves. So let's go back into that again. And we will ask for open borders but I think I'll wait and get my army in position to complete the quest so that I can cancel the closed borders or put closed borders on in the next turn now we're going to have like barely any influence for our next <laughs> empire plan but I think it's going to be worth it. So anyway, let's try and uh, search these ruins. So the riches are claimed. 110 Palladian. Is that it? Is that the quest done? <laughs> The armies didn't disappear, so it looks like we still got those to deal with, which could be quite annoying. Anyway, uh, let's have a look at our technology. We will have picked up quite a few more. So our armies can now be bigger, and they cost less to maintain, I believe. So we have four out of eight units in that army. So these armies are going to get pretty big. I mean, I think I could just merge these guys to have one big army. We are going to need it in order to take down this Guardian, which I think we might do at some point. Alright, let's get this Predator army to take out these Silix. And we're just going to auto-resolve it because we can, and that was nice and easy. So they should hopefully stay away now. Let's go to the Empire screen. We do have a few resources we can use. So Moonleaf, plus 50% science on cities. Kind of useless considering we don't use science. Um, but the plus 10% or 10 approval will be very useful. So let's just use that. Uh, spices, plus 50% food, of course, always great. And the plus 50% influence. Very good. Okay, so let's let's just get that underway. We currently get three pixie blood every turn, which will give us plus twenty percent health regen on cities. So when we have an army in a city, they will regen health better. But look at this. Look, our treasury is currently going up by two thousand five hundred and seventy-seven dust per turn, which I believe is like one technology, well actually the technology 3,164 dust at the moment but we're getting there, I mean all of those technologies that we just stole have boosted our way towards era 5 technology pretty quickly and we are going for the science victory so the sooner we can do that the better and that is going to be done by the help of all of these agents in many different places. So currently we are spying on the Volters, the Ardent Mages and the Wild Walkers. We could also think about infiltrating the Broken Lords at some point, although I don't particularly want to get any more heroes for now I don't think or any heroes I am getting and paying for 
they are going towards making my cities better at the moment. So we have Bishop Julian in Galarath. We have one of our leaders on my army, Guliawa. But yeah, all the others are spying at the moment. And how much did they cost? Let's have a look. 1,500. It might be worth me picking up another one. So this guy gives a food boost to a city. That guy has food boost 2 and influence boost 3. That guy has dust boost 3. And these two are good at spying. That one has a science boost that we don't need. This one is good at spying. So let's go for this one. Lawmaster Sem Sanitorwana. I tried to say that properly. <laughs> I probably just destroyed that name. And if we go into here, let's see what sort of bonuses he can give to a settlement. So extra influence, extra food, what else can he give? Obviously the inspirational leader, yeah let's, let's pick him up, pick him up, why not? Okay so we shall buy him. And we shall apply him to a settlement with a lot of rivers. Currently, that is looking like... Uh, well, Galarath has already got a guy. Maybe Ursae would be a nice one. Yeah, let's assign the hero here. And now, all of these river tiles will give us plus three food, I believe. Once we start to get this skill. So plus one terrain on terrain with river. Should help this city grow a lot quicker. And hopefully my leader there will level up pretty quickly. So that's good, that's all done. Let's now go ahead and end the turn. And we've got to decide actually when we think that it would be good to just save the rest of my dust until I can research like error 5 or error 6 technologies. But for now Vercal needs something to do so maybe sort that out but our quest was complete. Okay. So, keep armies from other empires or manufacturers away from the region of Telillium for five turns. I don't think we did that, but we got the reward anyway, which is the Scythe of Origa and uh, the Constructs army, which is pretty cool. You have awakened the ancient power of these Constructs. Use it wisely, which is pretty cool. Item costs return to normal. Plus 50% on item strategic resource cost on empire. So that's returned to normal. Wonderful. From dust to rust, help gather 100 palladium by searching the ruins. Each interaction will cost you 20% of this resource. So that was complete. And we got 400 dust from that. And we cancelled unwanted oxidation. Okay. So. Zaima has reached level 8. Let's go towards Spy. Plus five on Infiltrated Hero. Don't exactly know what that does, but should be useful. 
And we're making a lot of dust at the moment. But unfortunately, guys, that has been my time. So I think we're going to get back into this quite well. And I hope to make the episodes one a day again, or at least every other day, like they were before. But uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.